and uh, Dobre Dien, everybody to you. So, I'm going to talk about the HER2 positive breast cancer treatment now. Uh, this subject includes This subject includes uh, adjuvant, near adjuvant, and metastatic disease in 20 minutes. I promise to do it. It's uh, sometimes a whole congress of one day, dealing with it, but I try to do it in 20 minutes with the most attractive data that gives you some guidelines and some hints on the data, the actual data on this subject. Uh, Let's start probably with uh, her two positive disease. Yes. Okay. Very nice. With her two positive disease, before therapy stands the diagnostic. And uh, as I told you already yesterday in the satellite symposium, there's still, after more than 15 years or 20 years, a uh, strong debate about uh, what is HER2 positive. And if you look at the old textbooks, you find 25 to 30% HER2 positivity. And uh, these are just one of the many calculations of HER2 positivity. In this study, it's published um, for uh, breast cancer and pregnancy. There's uh, uh, values of 18 to 35% HER2 positivity. That means there's something wrong. Uh, is it uh, the population change the last 20 years? I don't believe that. that the tumor changed the characteristics. Uh, is the methodology of determination of HER2 positivity. And these still are strong questions. Many of the international studies, they describe false positive values of about 25%. This is not unusual. It's in, in many centers. If you look on the decentralized, decentralized uh, HER2 positivity determination, you find these values in most of the studies. And uh, K is number one is for every study to do a centralized HER2 testing to come on to comparable results. And that's what we have done. Just recently have been published in, uh, in San Antonio the 10 year date of the PCIH06. There are three adjuvant trials, the US study, HERA, and the BCIG-06. The one why, why I'm citing, not because I'm the co-author here, is the most pure study. Pure in some senses. It's beginning with centralized fish testing, the most reliable determination of HER2 positivity. All these 3,000 patients have been tested by FISH in Mike Press laboratory, one center, one test, and one reliable test. This study has two, two further features. There's no crossover in the study. It's about 3% had a crossover after the first uh, publication of Martin Picard of the HERA data. They had 60% of the HERA patients, they crossed over. That causes some problems in the control arm, obviously, because the control arm is very relatively small in the long run in statistics. The uh, US study had a crossover of 30%. Same problem, actually. It's a high number of crossover. The 06 has 3%. Third, this is the first and only study, adjuvant study, without an anthracycline. We can discuss about the importance of endocyclines in uh, HER2 positive breast cancer, but this study clearly shows that comparing a non endocycline arm, the third arm here, TCH, versus a sequence arm, AC, followed by TH, get, you get the same results. There's no difference. By the way, this study was not powered to show difference between these both Herceptin arms. It was powered for ACT versus the both Herceptin arms. But anyway, uh, the follow-up of 10 years now very clearly shows the conclusions here. Uh, can you show me the English version here? I, I, uh, the English on my screen? 
it's not English here, it's coming now in, in, in uh, Russian, so I have some problems to read that anyway. But I know what's happening. The 10 year data clearly show uh, equal results ACTH versus TZH. And uh, the 10-year results also show the difference is numerically a little bit in favor, 10 events in favor of ACTH, but the cardiac toxicity with all the uh, uh, cardiac failure problem that has been shown in this study uh, makes TCH a much more uh, acceptable and tolerable regime for especially concerning cardiac toxicity. This is an important feature because it's an important trial also the, because TCH, we are talking about this later on, is now used in near advanced therapy. I'm coming in a minute to this point. It's a basic and the backbone of many of the uh, near advanced trials using this uh, TCH combination or TCHP combination. Why is it important? Our philosophy always was uh, when we do a near advanced trial, not to start with AC. AC is not a favorable drug in near advanced study. We know that from, from B18 already. It's not to get complete response about 7-8% probably. And TCH, the backbone is trastuzumab. This is a key point, using trastuzumab. So, easily said, the best first. So if you start a near advanced trial, if you just start near advanced treatment, begin with trastuzumab, not first four cycles AC or EC or whatever combination you use, followed by TH. So best first, start up front with T, and that's in this combination, in the TCH combination, uh, fulfill this challenge. So the first, that means at the end of the day, H1 recommendations now. In the NCCN guidelines or recommendations is ACTH or TCH, six time TCH or ACTH, the sequence, four, four, AC or EC, but the sequence anthracycline TH is now recommended as equal treatment in adjuvant, uh, in equivalent uh, treatment, adjuvant treatment. So, the, but the first near adjuvant trial was the NOAA trial. The first, uh, the design of this study was made in the early 2000, 2001. It was, uh, the, the design was made on Brussels airport. Luca Ciani, Jose Basega, and me, were, we were advisors for Johnson & Johnson who wanted to buy her septin. And after the meeting, we had a, we had a delay. So we said two, two hours in the brasserie, the Brussels airport, and the design of this study was made at these days. And then it was bought by Roche, and Roche said, oh, Gottes Willen, what's going on here? Uh, why use AT&T, anthracycline, in combination with trastuzumab? These days, we, we knew from the 648 pivotal pivotal trial that it might be cardiotoxic, a combination. And so they asked us to make an, um, an uh, pilot study, European pilot study, that has been published in about 2002 in clinical cancer research. That were very early days, and uh, these were the first near advanced trials anyway. So the results, sorry, the results you're all familiar with uh, that has been published 2010 for the first time in Lancet. And uh, there are two points I want to mention. First point is uh, the study was a relatively high risk population group with a high uh, number of inflammatory disease and N2 disease, locally advanced breast cancer. And the total PCR, we, d we divide breast PCR and total PCR, that means also no involvement of the lymph nodes, clearly shows 43 versus 38%. There must happen something between the primary and the lymph nodes. Um, uh, we have no explanation at the moment why there's still active tumor tissue in the lymph nodes, while in the breast there's a pathological complete response. But anyway, the data are available, and the overall response rate was 87%. And this was the first from EMEA approved, from the European authorities approved design for neadjuvant treatment. So we can jump over this so data here quickly. You just see here how aggressive these tumor times were. That's don't compare uh, PCR rates from study to study. Sometimes it's depending on the population you include, and et cetera, et cetera. 
Uh, this is a characterization here. Uh, nodal positivity, 43 cases of 150 N2 population. That means, again, as I said before, the high risk population. And at the end of the day, it's in 10 to 3 population. It's a PCR rate pressed, 43% versus 23% in the non Herceptin arm and the observational control arm. HER2 negative for 17%. Again here, the, the uh, blot here, you can very clearly see that the inflammatory part is very effective, this treatment, the inflammatory part, with around 61 cases. Uh, it's uh, in favor of the Herceptin containing arm. That's what we know and what expected because uh, Inflammatory disease had a much higher rate of HER2 positivity than the other combinations. So this was the first step, and this was a, this still the approved trial combination or, or combination, the at and approval from the EMEA study, and then uh, pertuzumab jumped in, and uh, pertuzumab is a very interesting story in the background. Pertuzumab at the very beginning showed no effect in combination with chemotherapy, or little effect with chemotherapy, it was non-effective. And uh, the guys from the research laboratory in Penzberg from Roche, it's a big laboratory outside Munich with 2,000 scientists here there. They found in pre-clinical studies that uh, pertuzumab actually does not, is not very effective. But if you use it in combination, you find two points. You find a, a synergistic effect, a additional effect when you add pertuzumab to Herceptin. The reason is pertuzumab does bind to another anti-epitope at the HER2 receptor, surface receptor, then trastuzumab, and has different effects. But the main effect of combination of trastuzumab and pertuzumab is uh, HER2, HER3 dimerization blocking. That's what we call now, elegantly, it's a good marketing name, dual blockade. Dual blockade, then with double blocking by preventing the HER2, HER3 dimerization. That means the signal transduction pathway is maximally blocked at this point. The case study and a very intelligent study is the Neosphere study. Because this study answers a lot of questions. Many questions are answered by this small number of patients. Look, it's uh, just around 400, 450 patients. But it's a clever design, it's a phase two study, and uh, very, very clear results. The ARM1 is uh, docetaxel plus trastuzumab, the ARM2 is uh, the combination trastuzumab, pertuzumab, and docetaxel. ARM3, important ARM, the ARMC is a non-chemotherapy ARM, only the combination of the both antibodies, in ARM4 is uh, docetaxel plus pertuzumab. You look, this design with small number of patients in a phase two study, you can answer enormous number of questions. And, oops, stop. Battery. Sometimes the batteries here in the lighter are like in the modern cars. Electricity stops after 100 kilometers. So that's, you find this after it. <laughs> huh? I can press, nothing happens. Huh? So I can talk about Neosphere blindly. We start again. Up, 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 up. Up, 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 up. So, these are the data. You know, all of you are sure, all familiar with this data, but I would like to point out again 16.8% uh, PCR in only antibodies. This is a very new result. Uh, we didn't know that, that the antibody alone has such a high rate of, a relatively high rate of PCR, pathological complete response. And the combination arm on the left side, the green column, is uh, nearly doubling the rate of uh, PCR when adding 
per tusum up to tras tusum up and docetaxel. On the right side, again, what I said already, per tusum up is a weak antibody concerning the shrinkage of the tumor. It works only properly in combination by blocking her to her three dimerization process. And this is again what we know all uh, ER positives. And ER yeah, negative, there's a, a, a slightly difference between the, the efficacy uh, in favor of the HER2 positive ER PR negative patient group. But look on this slide here, the difference between uh, 5.9 in the HP group, 5.9 and 27.3 in the PCR rate uh, is interesting because it's the difference much higher than the other columns here. You look 20 versus 20, 36. It's five times lower than, and this uh, needs an explanation. So, uh, the, the meta-analysis induced from the FDA by Cortazar shows all the people here on this paper that were involved in, the, in many of the studies here, uh, in the adverse studies worldwide, and uh, you see very clearly the triple negatives and the HER2 positive patients they are the only one that benefit from this analysis of PCR because they are in favor. PCR is in favor of uh, the, the best prognostic factor anyway for both types. And this uh, led to the recommendation of FTA that uh, these two groups, triple negative and HER2 positive, are uh, exclusively favor from uh, prognosis and uh, favor from the knee adjuvant therapies. So the recommendations are now that uh, to use in her to positive treatment, uh, knee adjuvant therapy from the, that means from the very beginning before operation. And these are the summarized data you see in more than close to the half of the patients are from Germany. And Italy is, uh, this is Luca. And it's not an Italian study, it's an international study. Many were involved, also from Russia. The chairman is uh, one of the big uh, recruiters in the NOAA trial, Vladimir. And again, you see very clearly the benefit for HER2 positive uh, hormone receptor negative patient groups. So, next step is clear. Neosphere is a phase two study. A Neosphere, the combination of THP, that means Taxotere, Herceptin, and Pertuzumab, needs a confirmation because small number of patients and uh, that the approval by FDA was provisional for two years until more data acceptable are accepted or are coming up or confirm the Neosphere trial data, uh, which are doubling of the PCR rate in the uh, pertuzumab, trastuzumab arm. And uh, this has been done by Christine's study, study. You see two points in this study. It was originally designed as a four or five arm study. Uh, it's a TRIO study by TRIO. It was designed as a five arm study in Drosch cancer three arms because they were so convinced of TDM1 uh, these days when the design was made here. They were so convinced of TDM1 plus pertuzumab that it's the best worldwide at the moment that they said, okay, that's enough because this might be or will be the new standard anyway. And uh, TCH plus P, that was a control arm. Two points. TCH, we find it again after near advent, uh, after BCH06. TCHP as a control arm in the United States, it's accepted already. The backbone of this study was TCHP and the uh, experimental arm TDM1. And the results of this study were 450 patients together. The results of this study showed very clearly a benefit for the, contr for the, the control arm, for TCHP. This data came uh, in ASCO this year uh, by Sarah Herbitz from TRIO. And TCHP is a 12% benefit over TDM1 plus pertuzumab. We expected this because I come to this point in a minute to the Mariani trial. We expected this uh, difference, but uh, this might now characterize the new standard TCHP in the near advanced situation and probably also in the advanced situation in the future. We have to wait the affinity data in the, in the advanced situation, what's coming out 
but uh, uh, theoretically uh, TCHP can be used near adjuvant and adjuvant. Again, big involvement of Russian centers, and uh, so it's an international study, United States, Ukraine, Taiwan, and all the trio centers worldwide are involved. The three, phase one, phase two, phase three studies of pertuzumab in her two positive breast cancer, near advanced near sphere, again, Trifaina study also showed the same results as uh, near sphere. It's completed, but it was not primarily designed as an efficacy study. It was primarily designed for cardiotox, a primary endpoint, cardiotox, a combination of pertuzumab and trastuzumab, and the affinity trial is, uh, we have to wait for the data that might be presented in the near future. I have to come back to this uh, story again. TD Mon, the clinical development program, big program of TD Mon and the primary results from Emilia, phase three study of trastuzumab plus versus capecitabine and lapatinib, published a few years ago already, and everybody was very enthusiastic. The TD Mon, you are all familiar with this uh, drug. It's a trastuzumab combined with emtansine, a cytotoxic part of the drug. And the two arm study showed TDM1 versus capecitabine plus lapatinib, phase three trial metastatic breast cancer. And this is the design of the study here. Again, locally advanced or metastatic, TDM1 versus capecitabine plus lap. And as you all can see in all, in all points here, TDM1 was better than capecitabine plus lapatinib. And uh, this is a uh, subgroup analysis here. All subgroups here were in favor of uh, TD1 beside the over 65-year-old patient group. And the overall survivor showed a highly statistically significant benefit for TD1 versus capecitabine plus lapatinib. And uh, this data had been also shown or clearly shown the uh, Cleopatra trial, the final overall survival data presented by Santos Swain recently, analysis from the Cleopatra study, first line, first line, important, pertuzumab, trastuzumab, and docetaxel in patients with HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer, placebo plus trastuzumab plus docetaxel versus adding pertuzumab. This is a question. Number one is a standard of care at the moment, and the combination of pertuzumab plus trastuzumab plus docetaxel it's an uh, experimental arm here. And uh, in metastatic disease, primary endpoint, independently assessed progression-free survival. And you also see a, a broad gap between uh, uh, taxidere plus trastuzumab versus taxidere plus uh, docetaxel plus pertuzumab here in favor of the two antibody dual blockade arm. That means uh, at the end of the day, the Cleopatra conclusions are very clear. The combination of pertuzumab and trastuzumab improved the median overall survival by 15.7 months. And uh, the overall survival is extremely good, 56.5 months median overall survival is unprecedented in this indication and confirms the pertuzumab regimen. So, I'm quickly finish. Two slides. Phase three, Mariani study. Uh, the design was clear. Drastuzumab plus taxane. It was a when the design was made, nobody had any idea about the efficacy of pertuzumab. So it was still under investigation. That was a backbone. The the standard control arm was drastuzumab plus docetaxel. It's not a, it's not the best but what we know now. But it was compared with TDM1 and with TDM1 plus pertuzumab. Both arms, all three arms were very well balanced. Uh, more than 300 patients in each arm here. First patient in 2010, last patient in 2012. The data we know since December 2014. And everybody was shocked a little bit because there was no difference. There was no difference between um, the three arms. It was. Uh, even um, uh, equal, even because uh, Herceptin and Docetaxel are the relatively weak control arm, but there's no difference between TDM1 plus uh, pertuzumab or TDM1 alone. But tolerability was better 
side effects were less, no hair loss, these things, um, but uh, it's a high price to pay for this equal effect and this subjective improvement of um, the TDM1 arm. Anyway, that means at the end of the day, first time metastatic disease, THP. I heard today that Herceptin pertuzumab is available in Russia already at a combi package. It's a combi package that you get in one pack, you get Herceptin plus pertuzumab. It's a clever marketing. It's very good because I, I heard there's a biosimilar on the way there here. And uh, uh, first line is uh, Trastuzumab plus Trastuzumab plus Pertuzumab. Second line, TDM1, according to the data of Emilia. So that's the end. Thank you very much for your attendance. Just quick running through the three <laughs> groups. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I am discutant of this report, so no question.